Thank you, Bea. Colin, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, Igor. Thanks a lot for those who are there. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have much time to, to speak uh, about, uh, about NARD 2021, um, but I'll be glad to take your questions um, in all sorts of ways. I do have a link that I wanted to share, but as soon as I started sharing the screen, I lost the possibility of entering the tracks, uh, the, the, the chat, so I'll, I'll share it afterwards. So um, let me just say that I'm going to talk about uh, some common work that, uh, curiously enough, I think I've been presenting in parallel with Eric already about three or four times. It does happen that we are taking or tackling the same sort of problem from different angles, with different technologies, with different people. Um, but it's good that we just keep on meeting because I think that these projects should sort of help each other. So anyhow, this project is called X5 Moodle, and my co-authors are Walid Ben Ramdan, who I have seen is present, Davor Orlik, which some of you know, who is also very much linked with the OER organization, and Christian Percik, which is uh, who is also from Slovenia. So this link, which is here and will give later, gives you access to a blog, which is basically in French, all but this link, which is then going to be in English, and where you can download the article if you want and the links that I'm going to be talking about. Anyhow, uh, I'll go quickly, but every about this slide, everybody knows Moodle or should know Moodle. It is the most important learning management system, the one most universities are using. And more important, the one that most universities and schools want teachers to use. So it means that there is a constraint which is um, put on teachers. Sometimes they're not even very happy about that, but which means that when we come up with tools to use OER, we would really want to find tools that they can use inside Moodle rather than go onto a completely different platform. So that's what the goal of this project is about. So just to get the, 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 the idea of what, what, how I'm going to be presenting things, just suppose you're teaching a course on AI and climate change, which would be SDG 13, and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to give my normal lectures, but I want to involve my students by asking them to search for OER, to annotate OER, to compare OER one with each other, et cetera, et cetera. How could I do that from inside uh, Moodle? So that's what the, the goal of the operation is. So the context is that X5 Moodle is built as an interface to a more complex system called X5 GON, which has been presented in uh, this conference uh, before and which is a very big project aiming to provide with a sort of ecosystem of OER in many languages and uh, many topics. So when you're in Moodle, you usually have different roles. You can be the administrator, you can be the teacher, or you can be the students. When I'll be showing what happens, I'll really be concentrating about the student and the teacher role. The administration would be for more techie type of crowds. So the context for X5 Gone is that we have got sort of plenty of OER. They're in all formats, all languages, all over the topics. They can be in different collections and platforms, and they can be culturally different because we're not addressing um, a student from uh, Taiwan the same way as a student from the Netherlands or a student from Canada, to give these three examples that are important for OEG 2020. So can we sort of allow users to access and to use these OER, whatever the format, whatever the language, whatever the topic, the platform or the culture. And what we try to do with X5, which means times five gone, gone is global open in the education network, is to answer yes. So the uh, experimental setup, if you want to test it on your own, for the moment Moodle is uh, with this uh, plugin is installed on some machines that we have in Poshta. So it's a bit frustrating because you'd like to test it on your own Moodle, but of course for that, you'd have to be able to sort of install it on your Moodle and that will still require discussing with a lot of people. So in our experiment, it's over there. And so there can be a students and teachers who can actually look what's happening. So from the student's perspective, what the student discovers when this is installed on the Moodle play page for the teachers created for the course is going to find the fact that um, there's just a normal uh, lecture. So this is a mock lecture, of course. And then at the bottom, there is a little button. Oh, sorry. There's a little button saying, OK, here you've got the machine learning X5 Moodle machine learning in the survey of uh, climate change. 
So when the student clicks on that, he immediately gets access to something called X5 Discovery, which is a search engine. So the search engine is going to come up with the most common or the most uh, uh, logical um, terms, sorry, logical OER from a number of, uh, of sites. Here we've got video lectures, open stacks, then again, video lectures. So here are some resources, which by clicking on the resource, I would be able to go see what happens. There's of course uh, some key terms that are used to check. So since it's about climate change, we might put climate change, we might put ocean pollution, we might put whatever string we want. Notice that on the right here, there is a list of trends, which is what are the search strings that have been most commonly used in a recent past most recently used, but not by the entire world. We're not really very interested about what the entire world thinks of this. What the teacher wants is the students to interact with each other. So this is the trends of the classroom, allowing a student who's a little bit shy to actually find out what his colleagues have looked for, and therefore just building upon uh, the, uh, the, the work of their colleagues. You could think that that makes them lazy. You can also encourage the students to actually come up with new trends and to show that their trend goes up higher. You can think of different sort of learning scenarios which would, might work there. Um, so the, if, we, if we're testing this, we're just going to see, of course, that the more these trends are used, and the list is going on the right is going to change the ordering and the more important trends are going to go uh, up. Okay, what's happening here? Not notice, yes, notice the extra information. So I can of course find out in what language this resource is. I can also find out who the provider is. I can find out the different keywords and the topics. So the keywords are those important words and topics will correspond to what Eric was talking about before. Same idea, we use a search through Wikipedia to find the important Wikipedia pages that are related to the actual lecture. So apart from X5 discovery, the student can go to X5 recommend and obtain recommendations. So the recommendations are built upon the past experience of the classroom. What has the classroom been looking at? What are the most important videos? So of course, those means the videos the classroom has already looked at, but also those that are similar to the videos the classroom has looked at. So we are searching in a gigantic database using all sort of machine learning and AI to find sort of similar type of, uh, of material. Um, so there is a difference between the two and uh, in between the recommend, which is here on the, uh, here, sorry, recommend on, on, on both sides, is that of course, the more students look at something and the higher ranked uh, one particular um, video, or in this case video, but it could be um, a PDF or it could be any resource, will actually move up. Um, so there are counts which are so associated, which allow also a teacher to know which are the videos or which are the resources the students are looking at, and also it's students to actually understand what uh, is um, what the, their colleagues are looking at. Uh, there are, of course, some problems of cold starting all this because until the students have arrived on the platform, how, what are the initial recommendations? So for that, the initialization is pretty simple. The teacher will just put in some keywords so that the system says, okay, well, until I have some students entering and checking some resources out, we should just use some keywords and basically use the discovery tool to initialize the, um, the, the, the recommends uh, tool. So from the teacher's perspective, well, the good news is that it's really easy to install, provided the person in charge of the Moodle has installed it there. Uh, the teacher can choose which of the components he wants for his activity. So there are three components and I've only shown two, X5 Discovery and X5 Recommend. The third one, X5 Playlist, consists in building a playlist of the teacher's favorite resources and then suggesting to the students, hey, you can have a look at these. The initialization takes place easily, as I said before. And if you have done your playlist outside, you can just um, add it 
to the system through formats like MBZ or um, using a, a specific tool called X5Learn. And there are some analytics to be found so the, the teacher can uh, find out what are the things that the students are looking at, which are the keywords they are uh, searching for, et cetera, et cetera. There's one thing that is not in the slides, but is important, is that um, in a way, uh, Moodle is uh, uh, confined, but it's a safe environment. So it means that the data and the tracking is taking place only in Moodle in the usual way the Moodle of the university is doing. So then Moodle is just sending to the servers of X5 gone, just the data as in this resource has been searched for. But we don't know anything about what student, where, how, when has been actually looking for stuff. So we're not just our GDP, we're, we're actually really um, making sure that there is no information whatsoever which is being passed. Okay, at this point we, we had started doing some testing with real students and um, well, COVID, which also explains why I've got this strange light behind so that you don't see that I've got my special COVID haircut, right? Uh, so we're testing will resume as soon as COVID um, is ended. Uh, and that's about it. So I thank you very much. I know if you want to test, you just download these slides, which you can find using the link I am now going to put into the chat. If you want it installed to check us things, you just uh, send us an email and we can, uh, we can help you with this. Thank you. Oh, that was super efficient, Colin. You still have quite a bit of time left. So there's time for questions from the audience. Um, I know that a lot of people, quite a few people here in the audience list are actually based at institutions that do use Moodle, for instance. So it would be interesting to hear what they think about this, about this kind of opportunities that were just described by Colin. So I would like to specifically call out maybe Gino or <laughs> I can hear you from downstairs. Uh, or no, Paola. Don't, don't, don't worry. I mean, if people don't have questions, I can just add on a bit. I have to say the truth that as soon as I had on on full screen, I, I lost time and I thought, oh dear, I might be I might be on the wrong side. So I've been very a bit too inefficient. Just the, the idea is the following: is um, what, what what are the problems? And let's say in a way the common problems uh, with uh, the previous talk. So the, the thing is that there are lots of OER out there, but for the moment, we don't really have those tools that can go and fetch the stuff uh, from everywhere. So in the um, Project X5 Gone, we actually tried to do this, but we hit a barrier, which was the barrier of um, uh, universities and schools not very happy to tell their students to go to an external platform. For informal learning, it's okay. But when we're talking about students that are enrolled, people are nowadays a little bit skeptical or scared to send the students out specifically onto um, external learning platforms. So what people really want is to keep the students on their own learning platforms. And uh, so that is why it's up to us to somehow provide tools to access OER inside the learning platforms. And in the first case of these, of course, it's, um, it's, it's Moodle, right? So this is what the goal is. And what's interesting or fun, and there I'm certainly open to, you know, suggestions because this is difficult, is once we've said this, once we've said, wouldn't be good to actually give the opportunity for people to, um, uh, to use OER in the classrooms, we still have to come up with some interesting um, scenarios, pedagogic scenarios, didactic scenarios, where really interesting things happen in the interaction between the students on one hand, the teacher on another hand, and the OER on the third hand. And I can't hear you. Now. Thank you very much, Colin. And I think there are some additional comments in the chat window uh, in, this, in this regard also from Gino, we said there's going to be reaching out. Uh, okay. So I encourage you to reach through these comments. I actually also wanted to ask if you, I've noticed that you have, we have your co-presenter here as well, uh, Walid, yep. uh, online. And uh, Walid, is there anything that you would like to add from your side on this topic? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, no, I actually not the specific um, 
comments. But uh, as uh, as Colin said, uh, uh, we'll, um, we we will will be glad uh, to uh, to receive comments on uh, especially on the the big pedagogical uh, scenario that we can exploit uh, this plugin uh, because uh, because uh, this is uh, the the biggest uh, let's say uh, um, difficulty that we confronted. Okay. Great, thank you very much. Um, so, Colin, you still have uh, two to three minutes left. Is there something that you would like to say about next year's conference, just briefly? Um, no, we're really excited about it. So we're we're working on it. Uh, so we've put some uh, a video or two up. So one is very professional video done by uh, by the Cité des Congrès. So I should be making people excited in the idea of coming to Nantes. Nantes is a great way to come to France and see France. It's it's not Paris, it's different from Paris, but you can do both, obviously. Uh, and then there's another one which is much less professional, which was just done to try and give some of the key ideas and what we thought was going to be, you know, the important or some of the important topics for the, for the next conference. So uh, we're certainly open for suggestions, collaborations, uh, ideas. Uh, perhaps pass on one message, which is it's probable that with um, traveling post-COVID, let's call it like that, let's be optimistic, right? In post-COVID traveling, that it's going to be very difficult and very wrong in a way to just travel places for three days, right? So we will encourage people to organize small events after if they want to meet with colleagues to make it worth while traveling, if you see what I mean, all right? Rather than just be for three days conference, if you can be in a place for a bit longer, it will be probably more justifiable to to fly and use, um, you know, expensive aeroplanes, expensive for the planet aeroplanes. So if people have got ideas, please come. Come up with ideas. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Colin. So again, this is an invitation to all of you. Please do check that announcement uh, that was uh, communicated earlier today, but I've also posted the link into the chat window that contains both videos that Paul, uh, that Colin has just been speaking about. And Eric, also thank you for your recommendation uh, on what to do in Nantes too. So, you know, this is, hopefully we are gonna be able to meet. Uh, yeah. So far the invitation is that it's gonna be possible. So we are really looking forward to meeting many of you there next year. So, well, if there are no other questions, I think we can conclude this session. Uh, we are pretty much on time. So thank you very much, Colin, and both to you and to Walid. And uh, we can now discontinue the recording.